Hey, thanks for checking out my 10 star run of Silent Hill 2 on the PC. I'm using the Enhanced Edition, which is, uh, I guess you could call it like a mod pack. Includes a bunch of stuff that makes the PC version, I think, the best version. It still looks a lot like the PS2. The fog is made to look like the PS2. A bunch of other things are made to look more authentic to how the game is supposed to look. But you also have higher resolution textures and all that. And you get proper controller support. I think when I tried to play this without it, uh, I couldn't get my D-pad to work at all. But uh, Enhanced Edition fixes all that. So in this run I'm using the 2D control scheme, which uh, makes it so that you don't have tank controls. It's like a, it's like standard analog movement instead of using tank controls. Uh, so you can turn much faster and you're overall much more nimble. But since the game was made for tank controls in mind, Whenever the camera switches around, it's uh, very hard to stay moving where you want to move. So it's a kind of a trade-off and it can be frustrating sometimes. I definitely wouldn't recommend somebody who's playing this for the first time to ever use the 2D movement. Another peculiarity of the PC version is for the 10 star rank requirement uh, on the PS2 version you're only allowed to save twice but I guess when they made the PC version maybe they were worried the game might crash um, in the middle of a run maybe they weren't so sure about how reliable the game would be as far as a, a stability standpoint So they removed that two save requirement so you can save as many times as you want and still you're still eligible for a 10 star. But I think that's just too easy. So I decided to just limit myself to two saves like on the PS2 version. And because I'm limiting myself to two saves, I'm not using the quick save trick, which every time you quick save in the PC version, stames, it stames. <laughs> James's stamina uh, regenerates back to full. Because I think when they were designing the game, whenever text would appear on the screen, they would figure that, all right, James is already stooping down to pick up, pick something up. He would have regenerated his stamina by then. So that's like an oversight in the PC version. Enhanced Edition fixes this, but you can manually turn that fix off. Which is what I did for um, runs prior to this to get all the endings. But I'm not doing that here.
also unlike Silent Hill 1. Silent Hill 2 lets you use um, any of the special weapons you get from New Game Plus without any penalty. So I'm going to use the chainsaw a few times. Pretty sure I messed this part up and get and get slimed, yeah. When doing a 10 star run in Silent Hill 2, you have to be wary of how much damage you take. You can really... The maximum you can take is 500, which is roughly 5... 5 deaths if you weren't healing at all. 5 deaths worths. Which is... pretty small. I think that's the hardest part, is you have the 500 damage cap, but you also have to uh, kill 75 enemies by melee and 75 by shooting. Melee is easy, you just shoot an enemy and then kick it when it's down. But shooting can be harder because of how long it takes. And as you'll see later in the run, I make the mistake of trying to kill some lying figures, the, the straight jackets, by shooting uh, with the handgun. But usually when you shoot them with the handgun, they'll fall over forwards. And then they'll start their, uh, they'll crawl around really fast. Usually when you use the hunting rifle and the shotgun, they don't do that. But with the, with the handgun, they'll fall over forwards and then they can crawl. So definitely if you're if you're going for a 10 star don't use the handgun on lying figures unless you intend to kick them. You have to pick up quite a bit of items, but you really don't have to get everything. And you can see I'm just running past everything because it's really not worth trying to kill any enemies right yet because you don't have a firearm and that it just it's just way too slow to kill them by melee and it's much more risky without being able to be at a range Yeah, I do something real dumb here. I could have just kept running.
So I do mostly have the route of the game in my head. But uh, it's the same with Silent Hill 1. I just feel some kind of uh, satisfaction from checking all the doors and scribbling on the map, even though I usually know where to go. But sometimes that can help me if I find out that I'm missing something. I'm like, damn, where is this supposed to be again? But yeah, the, the time limit on the 10 star is 3 hours. Uh, and that's really not all that bad, as long as you mostly know what you have to do. And if you press select or escape on PC, the regular pause menu, not the inventory menu, I'm pretty sure that pauses the game timer too. So if you need to think of the solution to a puzzle if you forgot it or maybe you need to take a break or whatever, you can always just hit select. Yeah, I was like, I only have 19 bullets. I wanted, I wanted to check to see if the bullet adjust was still at 3, and it was. As you can see up in the left corner there, I've got a uh, performance monitor running. Completely useless. I mean, the game only runs at 30, and it's a PS2 game, so... But I figured to leave it there, because it's, uh... The mark of the Linux gamer. I'm running the game in Wine. With the Enhanced Edition, it's not all that hard to set up to be able to play it in Linux. Pretty much. But you may run into a few little things. But, uh, yeah, it runs just fine on the Steam Deck. The installer for Enhanced Edition can, can check and see if you're running it on Linux and it'll make the appropriate changes to make it work all fine. This room is completely unnecessary, but I decided to go in it anyway. Yeah, because it's very hard to keep track of how much enemies you've killed. Generally, once I get the handgun, I just try to kill everything I see. And then once, once I finish the hospital, then I try to kill everything I see by shooting. Because by then you're pretty much guaranteed to have killed everything. Get all you you pretty much are guaranteed to have gotten all your melee kills by then.
that's if you kill everything you see. There's a trick here where if you quickly swap your weapon in the PC version, you can have keys to swap your weapon to the next and previous. If you do that as you stumble here, you can skip the stumble animation. But I didn't have any anything bound for that for my uh, my dual sense, so. You really don't have to worry about time that much. But it still is a factor. I remember in one, I was always out of time. The time limit on one was really strict. One great thing about the pistol is you can move while you're shooting. While with the shotgun and hand uh and the rifle you can't. And for staying under 500 damage, that that's a big deal. So overall, I think most of the time you should be using the pistol. It's only for when you're trying to specifically do shooting kills that you should start switching to the shotgun and the rifle. That's just what I think though. I've also found that the rifle is like strangely inaccurate. Like I've missed at point blank range a lot. I think there's a few times in this run where you'll see the enemies like right in front of me and I somehow miss them. Yeah, the rifle is kind of underwhelming. I think this is where I decide to go back and fill out all the other rooms. Just 
because I wanted to. But there's nothing you need in there. As you can as you can see in this room, the camera's really not doing me any favors. Enemies are frequently like outside of the range of the camera. And they'll try to jump you. I find that a good strategy uh, with staying aware is wear good headphones and uh Keep track of where James is looking, because if he sees an enemy, he's going to look at it. And if you've played the game enough times, you'll know where most of the enemies uh, start out or spawn. As you can see, I also manually reload. It is faster to go into your inventory, but sometimes I really just don't want to bother with that. Pretty sure you can only manually reload on the PC. On the PS2, you have to go into your inventory. So for this run, I just unlocked the extra riddle difficulty. And I completely forgot what J meant. I thought, okay, J is the 10th. Pretty sure it's the 10th letter in the alphabet. Uh, so I was trying to go to thinking it was 10. Um... Yeah, I, I did play through extra uh, way back on the PS2, but I forgot everything. So I waste a lot of time here fumbling around for something that I don't really even need. You just get ammo from this uh, safe. Yeah, I totally didn't just look up the solution. That would be horrible. That would be cheating. But of course, there's not just one solution. Also, you can see that the... The safe just got smaller. I'm not sure if that's a bug in... In the uh, Enhanced Edition, or... If that's just something wrong with wine. But, uh, it's not a big deal, I don't think. Yeah, but there's not just one solution. I mean, there's uh, there's going to be a different combo pretty much every every time you play. But how you reach that solution, I I just forgot, and I totally didn't look it up. Totally didn't.
So I ten starred Silent Hill 1 many years ago. I don't have any footage of it, but trust me, it happened. And I always wanted to ten star Silent Hill 2, but just for some reason I never could get myself to do it. I made a few attempts, but there was something fundamental about Silent Hill 2 that just made it a lot less fun to play. Like, replay, than the original. And even now I can't fully pinpoint why. I mean, the original was my first game, so maybe, maybe there was something to do with nostalgia, even though I played 2 and 3 so long ago as well. But I, I think part of it is that the movement in 2 just feels a lot more sluggish than in 1. Like on this, in the streets, uh, you know, James has an invisible stamina bar. And he'll get slower and slower the longer he runs. But I never really noticed that with the first game. Yeah, I can't really pinpoint why, but... The first game is definitely my favorite. And it's definitely my, re my favorite to just replay. But that's not to say I didn't have fun doing this run. There's a lot of tense moments and I was I was enjoying it quite a bit. So I guess I could say that it grew on me. Yeah, this bit too. I did not remember the solution, so... I had to do what I had to do. Which of course meant, what meant you know... Figure it out by myself.
here's Mr. Triangle. There's really not all that much to this. You just switch sides in the room when he gets close to you. But he does have an overhead swing that can instantly kill you. And if he does it from far enough away, the camera might not fully show him doing it. So you might not even know he's doing it until it's too late. So you've got to kind of almost memorize what he looks like when he's doing different moves. Yeah, that, this can be, even though it's so simple, it can be kind of stressful that you spent like 30 minutes getting here and you might have to do it all over again if you make a dumb mistake. So Maria doesn't really impact this too much, um, but there's always the risk of accidentally killing her. She'll die to a single shot from you. And if you're really unlucky, she can just kind of stand right in front of you as you're trying to shoot something. But that's if you're really unlucky. But I didn't want to take that chance, so... You'll see the minute I get to the hospital, I throw her in the third floor. So there's one of the other uh, New Game Plus items. There's not exactly a requirement for getting all of them for a 10 star, but your, how much items you get, you get it kind of like a score based on um, how much items you get and the New Game Plus items act as kind of a multiplier, but there's a cap to the, you know, your max score for items collected. But you have to reach that 
to get 10 star. So you don't, as long as you pick up a bunch of stuff, you don't need to get every single New Game Plus item, but you probably would want to get most of them, and it's not, they're really not out of your way. The dog key takes maybe like 10, 15 seconds to go grab. Um, I'm doing the UFO ending, because I like to think that it's the canon ending, because it makes Silent Hill 3 a lot less sad. Um, but you can't get the last rebirth item for that, which is the Book of Crimson Ceremony. Because you had to have watched the tape to, and then go down to the um, library in the hotel to get that. But of course for UFO, you can't watch the tape, you've got to use the channeling stone um, right when you get into your old uh, hotel room. But because it acts as a multiplier, um, if you get the dog ending instead, which lets you go back down, um, you could end up get, needing to get a whole lot less items. But since you have to do so many kills by shooting, um, it's really not a bad idea to pick up everything you find. I would frequently run out of rifle ammo. And of course I wouldn't run out of anything else, but... Unless you're doing a legit, like, speed run. I wouldn't see why not just pick up everything. Now I said before that you can move with the pistol when you're shooting, but the movement is very strange. I think it's similar in Silent Hill 1, but you, if you're shooting and you change direction of movement, James will just kind of stop, but he'll also stop shooting too. Um, and that opens you up to possibly getting attacked in the like three and a quarter second or however long it takes for James to finally like start moving again and start shooting. But that that is it does get kind of annoying. Especially when I when I'm in the streets and I'm going for the um, shooting kills with a shotgun. Because if you're walking towards an enemy and then you decide to shoot, James will like stop walking, take half a second, and then shoot. He doesn't shoot immediately. It's very wonky. So you have to get used to that. Another thing you might notice is that on hard, um, if you kill everything in a hallway or a room, there's a pretty high chance that they'll respawn. Which can be pretty good for adding to your counter. So given that, given that peculiarity I was explaining before, you'll see me running straight into enemies because if I'm already moving forward and shooting, if I decide to stop moving, I'll also stop shooting for 
you know, half a second or whatever. And I don't want to do that. So not only is there a pause with stopping moving or changing moving directions, if you're already shooting while standing still, I'm pretty sure there's also a pause when you decide to start moving. There's a lot of pausing that you have to keep in mind. So you'll see when I'm going for the shooting kills, I keep a very big distance most of the time because I don't want to deal with that. Attacks from the nurses do quite a lot more damage than the lying figures do. At least lying figures that are standing up. The crawling lying figures might be might do quite a bit more than standing. There's one room later on in, I think it's the alternate hospital. Ow. I decided to let this play out because I've, I don't think I've really ever seen this cutscene without Maria there. Um, but there's a room, I think, in the first floor of the alternate hospital. It might be the second. I'm not sure which floor, to be honest. But we'll see. There's two nurses that come at you from opposing sides. There's nothing important in that room. Uh, don't, don't go in that room. Don't make my mistake. It's almost impossible to not get hit going for that item in that room. Uh, just don't go in it. Yeah, with the standard enemies in this game, the the hard part comes from if there's more than one of them. Because then you have to think about, do you have enough room to go stomp the one you just downed, or do you have to be more patient and focus on the one that's coming towards you that's closer? Enemy health is also kind of strange. It's almost like it regenerates.
but I'm not quite sure if that's the right... That's what it really does. It sure feels like it, though. The more time you take to kill something, it feels like the... The more health it actually has. I think it might be something like... If the thing's standing and taking hits, it can take a lot more hits than if it's down and taking hits. So if you shoot an enemy while it's standing and then it gets knocked over and you don't shoot it while it's down, I think it just ends up taking a lot more to kill it if you're never shooting it when it's down. My memory is very uh, unreliable, so I took the time to go look at each memo. I couldn't even keep two of them in memory, so I had to do one, go back to the memos again, look at the other one. But again, I keep saying this, but like three hours is a lot of time if you know the general route of what you're supposed to do. So this fight coming up is definitely a shotgun fight. You'll definitely want to keep the shotgun out. Unlike Silent Hill 1, where you can move while aiming the shotgun, in 2, you are just... you're just stuck in place. So you've got to be mindful of how long you're taking when you're aiming and firing, because you can't move. As you can see, I get grabbed there. I think that's the only time I get grabbed. Generally, what I did here is I would bait them into trying to grab me. Really, if you just run right under them, but keep running, um, they'll try to grab, and you'll be able to get a shot off. Provided you, you know, give yourself enough distance, because when you're, when you're pumping the shotgun, you can't move either. There's just so much, um, there's so much pausing in, in James's movement that you have to keep track of. And of 
course in a boss fight, if you're reloading, you don't want to manually reload, you don't want to end up having James reload by himself. You want to go reload in your inventory, because that spends no, no time, as far as you know. It does, it does count down the timer, but it's much safer. This room is tough because they have enough of a walkway for both of them to get to you. And I'm pretty sure it's unnecessary to even be here. Yeah, if you come into this room and start running without knowing what's in it, you'll probably get whacked because the nurse starts whacking the instant the door opens. This room is what I'm talking about. Don't attempt it. If you accidentally end up going in there the instant you see those two, just... Just turn 360 degrees and walk away. Because they both come at you from just the opposite sides of the room. You can't down one of them and have their body block the other one. And the first save is coming up, so I think it's the best spot to save is, you'll see where I save, but it's right before the pyramid head chase, because Maria can really easily die there. But ideally, once you save, that'd be like the only the only time you have to do this whole 
part of the game trying to 10 star. The rest of it can be just attempting afterwards from that save. So you really want to take the very least amount of damage, keep the damage like the lowest here so that you have breathing room for later on. Another thing to keep in mind with doing a 10 star, if you care about saves, or if you're doing it on the PS2 version, you have no choice but to care about saves, is I'm pretty sure if you check um, the red square for saving, that counts as a save whether or not you actually saved. James. I, I hope I'm wrong on that. I've never tested it myself, but I remember hearing about that. So you might see a few times that I very am very cautious around those. So that I make sure I don't accidentally interact with them and potentially ruin the the attempt. think any inventory doing anything with the inventory could have saved me there maybe unequipping the handgun and quickly running backwards would have saved me Yeah, I wasn't totally 100% sure that the solution for this was going to be 1-3. Three, 3-1-3. Three, three. Um, because it is extra and, as you've seen before, 
Don't really remember all the extra stuff. Because if you're not 100% sure what the solution to that is, and you mess it up, you take a lot of damage. It, it like, sprays you. And that would really be bad, of course. But it's... You don't really need it. It's just a bunch of... Supplies. Yeah, so that was my first save there, right before the Pyramid Head chase. And I really think that is the best spot for your first save. And I didn't include the, the footage of me, like, reloading saves. Like, dying or getting hit too much and deciding to reload. Because that's... I don't know, that'd be boring to watch, probably. I like this whole run, of course. So what I used to do here is every corner I would fire a whole mag into Mr. Triangle and then rinse and repeat. But I found, as you can see here, I, I only fire a mag at the very beginning and then there's this screen door, screen fence that you can shoot through. and it should give you enough time to get out before uh, Maria gets hit too much. So this is going to be the most con time consuming part of the run versus just playing the game normally. Um, from this point on I decide that I should focus on getting only shooting kills. And doing kills by shooting takes way longer than just downing them and kicking them. And it's also a lot more dangerous, if there's more than one. So yeah, I have to shoot them, down them, shoot them while they're down, let them get back up again, shoot them again. They're down. Hopefully, they're dead by then. Sometimes they're not, so I gotta do it again. And then after I, I'm sure they're dead, then I have to go reload. It's all very time consuming. But I did this whole area very safely. I always kept my distance, so... I maybe took longer here than... I needed to. Because of course, the shotgun, like most video game shotguns, is um... What would you call it? 
It's pellets instead of a, uh... I don't know my gun lingo. But the closer you are, the more, the more, uh... Likely all the pellets are gonna connect. So I found watching um, somebody else do a 10 star run, more professionally I guess. They said that <clears throat> the game kind of keeps track of uh, if you're attacking them as they're attacking, and they ca it calls it a counter, like a counter attack. So if their attack animation starts and then you fire, I guess it does more damage, and it seems like that's true. So later on in the streets, I try to let them start their animation to try to whack me and then shoot them. With the nurses, it's, there, it's very telegraphed. And you can easily fire before they before they swing, unless of course you're already moving. Because if you're moving, then James is gonna pause for like what feels like to you an eternity, and then he'll stop moving, and then he'll shoot. By that by that time, you'll get hit. So you have to be standing still. Feels like you can tell how much damage you're doing based on like how loud the nurse sounds when when they're hit. But the last playthroughs I did, um, I was just getting, trying to get all the endings on the PC version, so I was just going through pretty fast. Um, but I made some, like, fake 10 star attempts during that to try to know what I'm up against, I guess. And I found that, um, I was, I came up short on my shooting kills, even though I was shooting doing shooting kills as my only method of killing past the uh, hospital. So I think it's pretty important that at this point, if you're deciding to do the method of kill by melee up until the end of the hospital, um, that you haunt here. You want to just like add to that counter as much as you can and don't worry too much about taking a little bit more time to do it just you know go back and forth through the streets almost like you're you're going through the streets the first time and you don't even know your way around kind of like that and every time you hear a nurse walking around you just go find where they are and hunt them down I've always wondered why there are even nurses outside of the hospital. Like, what's the symbolic reason for <coughs> there being nurses outside of the hospital? I feel like maybe there isn't one, 
and it might have been more of a budget reason that they couldn't because I think I think you see a lot of the critiques of Silent Hill 2 it's kind of hard to come by a critique of Silent Hill 2 but if you do um, some of them might point to a lower enemy variety versus one and that might that they might be onto something there that that may be for budget reasons they didn't they didn't add any enemies in the streets once you come to the streets at nighttime This is totally guesswork, like, I don't really know. So the hyper spray counts as a, uh, one of the new game plus items. I think depending on what hyper spray you have, you can stun certain enemies. They'll like sit there motionless for a really long time. Looking back at my run, I feel like maybe, maybe I should have used that more in the, uh, in the in the prison. lot of crazy stuff happen in the prison. A lot of mistakes. Once I got to the um, ranking screen and, you know, I got my 10 stars, I found that I had a lot more shooting kills than I thought I would have. And in fact, I had a lot more shooting kills than I had melee. So if you hunt here and then, you know, continue on with the game, if you do a good enough job hunting here, you might not need to keep doing the rest of the game going for shooting kills which would be very good because it's a lot less safe as you'll see in the prison but yeah if you're ever dealing with two enemies and you really and you're trying to do only shooting kills and you really don't know if you can do it without getting hit. Um, I think, I think your, I think the damage matters a lot more than your kill count. I'm pretty sure I go through the entire streets here without getting hit once. Um, I'm pretty proud of that. But really, I mean, you have so much space between you and the enemy, always, so... It wasn't super hard to do. But yeah, I think in, in a situation like that, where you don't know if you can do it without getting hit, just don't do it, or just kick them. Most of the enemies you'll see when you're hunting are going to just be solos. And another cool thing you can do is, um... My second save, I decided to save before, uh, before daddy. Um, because I found that, like, 
if I don't do the cheese right, um, I could get I could get the suck. But, I think that turned out to be really good, because not only does that make sure that I don't accidentally throw away the entire run if I mess up the cheese, but right after uh, the fight with Daddy, you have the, um, the, uh, the hangman puzzle. And if you deliberately do the wrong choice for the hangman puzzle, a bunch of lying figures spawn in. So you could potentially, you know, finish the game, get your ranking, and if you find out that you had a lot less shooting or melee kills uh, than you needed, you could just go back and adjust for that by, by, like, intentionally getting the puzzle wrong and continuously spawning them in. But the hallway that they spawn in is very short. Uh, it has, there's not a whole lot of movement options is what I'm trying to say, so it can be kind of dangerous. But I mean, it's not like, it's not like your last save is ages ago, your last save is like two minutes ago, so it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Having fun yet? might not be the best kind of video to express this in, but even after doing this 10 star run and commenting on all the different flaws in the movement, even versus the first game, I still don't, I don't understand from like an artistic perspective or a quality perspective, why there needs to be a remake of this game. I guess time will tell, maybe it'll have enough qualities of its own that'll make me still like it a lot, like with uh, the remake of Resident Evil 2. But Silent Hill 2 is just... In an, in an artistic sense, it's just, it's just not, you, it's not the same as comparing like Resident Evil 2 versus Resident Evil 2 Remake. Even, I mean, of course, even Resident Evil has an artistic quality to it, all games do. But, um... I guess what I'm trying to say is I would much rather just have be having a new game instead of a remake of Silent Hill 2. Because I think the worst part about 
the original Silent Hill games is how hard they are for the average person to even be able to play. It's like really depressing if somebody if somebody I know has a passing interest in, in in horror games or horror anything. It's like I can't even recommend them to play the original Silent Hill games. Because the average person's not gonna know how to operate an emulator or grab the PC port and get it working. You know, there's no Switch version of Silent Hill 2. Or 1. Or 3. You could tell them to go get a PS2 and spend $300 on eBay to buy a used copy. It's... It's just depressing. There, there could be so much more people that could experience these games if they just had a modern port of them. I just don't get why they haven't done that. I know they messed up the HD collection, but... I don't even think you need the source code of this game to port it. I'm pretty sure Bluepoint famously ported uh, the Metal Gear Solid 3 and 2, 2 and 3, and Peace Walker. I don't think... I don't think they even had the source code. They just... They just did their own magic without the source code. Because they, they famously, like, lost the source code for Silent Hill 2. Up to a point. Like, the only source code they have is, like, an early version of the game. Which is partly why the HD collection is all messed up. And consoles now are so close to PCs already. Like the Xbox and PlayStation, I'm pretty sure they run on x86. So just like doing a version of the PC version through a compatibility layer. It, I just think it's it's totally possible to get these games to have modern ports. And that's like the most disappointing thing about like the announcements that were made from Konami about the about the newer games that everybody's working on. Like the thing I wanted most from them is just recent ports. New ports so that everyone can play these games. I'm really excited for Silent Hill F, though. That looks like a totally new thing. Totally new is good.
I fully expect it to have a time loop feature like in Majora's Mask. And every loop will be slightly different. I think part of the tenseness of this run is, after doing this, the thought of having to do all this shit over again was just so terrifying. Like, it's still going. I'm not done hunting yet. Also, just quickly point out that if you missed any of the special items here, like the dog key, or the first rebirth book, you can still pick them up. You can see how much ammo this goes through. I never run out, but... With Resident Evil 2, the original is still my favorite. Well, 7's my favorite, but I, I still I still like the original more than the remake. I'd put 2 as my second favorite in the in the series. Um, but I feel like it's a lot harder to even find anything on the original since the remake came out. You search up Resident Evil 2 and you're going to be finding Resident Evil 2 Remake. Like it almost replaced the original game. But it's a it's a great game. The remake's a great game. If, if, a, if the average person wanted to play Resident Evil 2, not like they even could easily play the original. But if they wanted to play it, I mean, I would totally just say, yeah, play the remake. It's a good game. So I really hope the Silent Hill 2 remake, remake is good that it has a lot of 
things that make it stand out from the original. Its own qualities, I guess. But even if it's fantastic, it's still going to be really disappointing to, I think, inevitably see the original almost get replaced by it, if it's good. I think for a second there, the, the audio made it sound like they were like, the nurse was like outside of the play area, like they were underneath the bridge. Or on the side of the road or whatever. Alright folks, I'm pretty sure that's it. It's, that's it. Yep. The hunt is over. Don't forget to pick up the goblet here. the run you might have noticed a few hitches here and there that are like very small I'm going to blame that on Nvidia it seems like every time I try to use OBS to capture something like a game the frame times get weird NVIDIA's uh, Linux drivers are a joke, so I think that's what's going on. Here's a tight spot. Two lying figures. And the hallway is large enough so that if I'm shooting one, I'm not always going to be hitting the other. And 
then a third one comes in. Yeah, here, here is where, like, don't do that. Do not use the handgun against these guys if you intend to shoot, kill them. Here is the um, goofiest part of the run. The most embarrassing part of the run. I don't even know if I can call it a run since it's not single segment. But I sit here for a long time trying to open this door. And my memory is not perfect, so I forget if I already tried the same combination. I also didn't know that um, if there's three numbers that are lit, you have to use all three numbers when you're doing the code. But I figured also, you know, since this is extra, maybe, maybe that's not a thing. Maybe anything goes. So, here I was sitting in the bug room. I took like a full, a full James of health bar. A full James of damage. I'm sitting here mashing the keypad. So if you're feeling like living dangerously and you want to do things fast and you're doing a 10 star, you get hurt a lot in this room, but you can get a lot of melee kills by just pressing X a bunch. Or, or A if you're using an Xbox controller. Although, I don't even know if creepers count as kills. They should, but I don't know.
my eyes don't deceive me, I think I just downed one, but they turned into a brawler, even though it was with a shotgun. Anyway, with the pistol though, we'll always do that. so much more dangerous when they crawl. <laughs> yeah, I gave up. He was a lost cause. I think here is where I learned my lesson. I just stopped trying to use the hand. Like I said before, the rifle is kind of underwhelming. Its accuracy is really weird. I missed a lot with it and I never really understood why. But for going for shooting kills, it's like the safest thing to use if the enemy's far enough away. how much hits that guy takes and he's still crawling around I would suggest if you find a crawler in here uh, to camp behind those bars there wait for the crawler to come through the door and then kind of just run through that space just don't even interact with them if you can just make it to the next room The whole run, your health is your highest priority. So I have another one coming from behind me. James auto aims to the other guy. <laughs> yeah, this part was tense. And I missed for no reason. He's right in front of me.
I think this part is where the auto-aim had some fun. I didn't notice that I only had one left. Click. Oh. Another thing I haven't mentioned yet is if you're shooting something as it's getting up, I'm not quite sure if it takes damage, but the more important thing is it doesn't flinch. Which is really bad with a shotgun. Because it could be getting up, you shoot, it's not flinching, it's still getting up. You're pumping the shotgun and it's still walking towards you as you're pumping and it probably hit you. right before you're ready to fire again. Very important, especially during the hunt. rifle folks again I also saw on uh, the Enhanced Editions GitHub that somebody's working on getting 60 FPS to work properly for this game. Which I'm really excited for. If you can't tell it in my monotone, dead voice.
there's a few issues right now with like how the game's really always been that makes 60 FPS just not work. Every time you fire a shot, the um, the expelled cartridge just keeps making noise even after it's already hit the ground, and it's like it, it it's really annoying. It's like almost deafening. There's a few other problems too. I think it's I think enemy speed is different. There's a lot of dead time here where you have no choice but to sit to wait for the elevator. If I really wanted to do something funny, I'd pull out the chainsaw and sit there, and then let James do his chainsaw yell. But I forgot that you- I forgot how to do that, and I didn't know it was just like an idle animation. Be very careful. Not touch the red square. What are those red squares anyway? I've never figured it out. Maybe I'm maybe I'm stupid for not knowing. Is that double step in the PS2 version too? I don't know. It's funky. And I never see them doing it, I just hear them doing it. That's what, that's what horror is all about, right? You can hear them do the funky tap dance. But you can't see them do it. This bit coming up is very embarrassing. I think Mr. Triangle always is in the same spot. So running this way, bam, there goes like more than half my health or whatever. Oof. I was so freaked out. I thought the attempt was over and I'd have to go hunt again. Maybe not so much that I thought it was over, but I thought that uh, it was in great danger of being over.
In my previous playthroughs, it would generally be around here where I would decide to stop shooting everything. But I'm not going to tell you that that's what you should do. Unless, of course, you decide to make that save before Daddy. I find that a lot of the other people who've done 10 stars, they like to save before Eddie. They feel like they've got Daddy down, so... But if you do that, then, um... You can't farm. You feel like you're low on shooting or melee kills. And there aren't a whole lot of enemies left to kill in the hotel to make up for it, depending on how much... how short you are. But yeah, if you're planning to save before daddy, then by all means, even before here... Like, maybe even, like, just hunt, just do a good enough job hunting in the streets. And then if you see, like, one off, like, just one, one enemy in uh, the prison, you can kill them by shooting. If they're just by themselves. Parts like these are really difficult because um, the camera doesn't move, and I don't think you can use L2 to go make the camera go to where you want it to go. So you're kind of in like a in like a Resident Evil situation where the enemy's completely off screen, and you just have to kind of guess based on sound where James is looking, how far away they are. This is very dumb on my part. I don't know why I tried to do that. I guess it was kind of a uh, panic or something. I should have just shot him when he got up instead of running into him.
another tap dance that I can't see. The maze here really drags on. I keep, I keep thinking, oh, is this door? Is this the door to Daddy? But uh, not this one. Door ladder. I got gassed so many times, but um, I still ended up pretty low on under the limit. It was, uh, you know, the limit is 500, but I made it out with about 320, I think. Yeah, so this is the second save right before daddy. And I screwed up, I think it was three times, but it might have been four. So boy, am I glad I saved there. Here's the cheese. It's not too hard to pull off. Just go into a corner. Get a decent enough timing on it so that you're hitting the wall. Because if James doesn't hit the wall, he's a lot slower to recover from uh, swinging the, um, the triangle sword. So on extra riddle difficulty, it's the, um, it's the thief that's innocent. So we find out where the thief is and pull his rope. And if you're short on kills, just intentionally pull the wrong rope and kill as much as you want in here. But of course, the problem with saving before daddy is the much harder fight, Eddie, takes longer to retry. But I was okay with that, because I feel like the Eddie fight would be much more fun to keep doing than hunting in the streets again. <laughs>
So, the chainsaw, I think, is the best uh, weapon for fighting Eddie. It has really good reach. It doesn't take too long to swing. And hitting him with a... I think hitting him with a melee attack kind of gets him to be more likely to come after you with a punch instead of trying to shoot you. If Eddie shoots you, that does a crazy amount of damage. It's like three quarters of your health. So if your run was very similar to mine, you could really only get away with getting shot once, twice at the most. On one of my attempts, I got shot twice, and I was like, that, that's too much, I'm just reloading. So, this is where things get harder. And I have some goof-ups here. But, what you want to do is... Uh, hug one of the meat racks. and bait Eddie into coming over to punch you. And if you are in the right position, he'll just punch the meat rack instead of you. Even though you're right in front of him, he can end up punching him the meat rack and it not hitting you. But of course, your chainsaw will go through the meat rack. Yeah, if he comes up to try to punch you, just back up. And he'll never hit you as long as you're backing up. Of course, though, with the chainsaw, to keep yourself going fast with the movement, or rather hitting him. There we go. Uh, you've got to you've got to hold R two to keep it to keep it uh, keep it revved up. If you let go of R2, you've got to rev it up again to start hitting. And so I'm going for the UFO ending, so I use the channeling stone here. So here is where I have the unfair advantage over a PS2 or, God forbid, HD collection player. Where PC doesn't make you have the harder controls with the boat section you just have you just basically have like tank controls for a boat and that's it you don't have to use the second analog stick and there was nothing I could do about that I couldn't really make it harder or more close to the PS2's challenge uh, so whatever note that during the boat section, not sure if this is how it is on PS2, but James's animations for it are slightly deceiving. You might be turning the boat, but James doesn't look like he's turning the boat. So you'll have to get a hang of it without relying too much on what it looks like. But it's, it's real easy on PC. I think my time was like a minute, and I think you have to be under a minute 30. 30, 30, 30 seconds of leeway is a lot. This part was... This part got me good. So I down him, and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna kill him by shooting. But that wasn't enough. So I... Go 
go into hiding. But as it turns out, the best weapon for these guys is the chainsaw. You just poke them with it and they're down. And I missed here and oh man, I was freaking out. I was freaking out. Yeah, if you have decent enough timing with the chainsaw, it doesn't even have to be really good timing. Just pretty decent. You can hit you can hit one of the uh, daddies before they, they grab you. I forgot to mention this, but this whole run was a failure because I skipped the cutscene in the bowling alley. If you don't have a run where James says his iconic line, This town is full of monsters. Then... Did you really even beat the game? I don't think I did. I think I have to do this all over again. That daddy kept coming over as I was kicking. I don't know if I wouldn't have gotten grabbed. So I'm glad he just paused there. But yeah, as far as difficulty, the run's over. Um, there's really nothing... Nothing left of note that could be a real uh, hurdle. Everything is done, you just go through the motions of getting all of the music boxes, like always. I 
I mean, you have some mannequins in the basement, but they're nothing, and even if you get hit, they don't really do all that much. I do have the challenge of painstakingly putting every single item on the shelf. Maybe that's something they could they could change in the remake. Do you want to put all of your items on this shelf? Yes, no. Going back and getting all of the endings in the PC version after having played the PS2 version when I was younger. Um, it feels really like every ending except leave is bad. It feels like James didn't really learn anything. Um, with the Maria ending. But that's just how I saw it. James betrays Mary's wish of him living for himself. The rebirth ending. Um, James never truly accepts Mary's death and relies on trying to do some ceremony to bring her back. And it's never, it's never disclosed if it even works. And this is Silent Hill, so if it does work, there's going to be a lot of asterisks. So, yeah, the UFO ending is the canon ending. James never confronts what he did, what happened. And instead goes on space adventures with Harry. Even though I know it doesn't appear, I go here anyway. I don't know why.
Whoops. Whoopsie daisies. Whoopsie daisies. I forgot. I forgot. Forgot the key. So close, and I forgot. That was a funny moment for me. Speaking of funny moments, here it is, the end. Thumbs up. Two thumbs up. The critics love it. There it is. Ten stars. I really like this song. Very comfy. Yeah, so I took two hours, 14 minutes. Um, and the cap is three hours, so I had 45 minutes to spare. I killed a lot more by shooting than I needed to. The minimum was 75 and I got 104 so I wasted a lot of time and a lot of health but I mean it's not like you have a counter to look at unless you like make a tally but yeah I'm very glad I finally did this I've wanted to do it for a long time is it is it worth it? Uh, as far as what you get, I mean, you get something, you get the green hyper spray, which can kill anything um, instantly, which is cool. Uh, but I think from the perspective of like, I feel like I've fully mastered this game that I love so much that I've done everything there is to do with it is cool. It's a good feeling. Well, mastered in the eyes of the game. Yeah. But yeah, thanks so much for watching and putting up with my uh, monotonous commentary. And maybe I'll make another one of these if I ever do this to Silent Hill 3. I guess we'll see.